The next talk, as I had mentioned, um, was previously planned to come from Professor Karsten Maple of WMG, University of Warwick. Um, he is unable to come here and um, has handed over that talk to Peter Davies. I'll let Peter introduce this paper uh, and I'll give a little bit about Peter's bio uh, on his talk, but I'll hand over to you, Peter. Thanks very much, Paul. So this is an example of identity theft then. And I hope I haven't got 10 minutes to give the 47 slides that Carsten has given me. Yes. We'll, we'll try and get through this as quickly as we can, uh, whilst covering all the things that are important. So this is going through and um, um, unlike Sergio's talk, which was very useful and very interesting, this is looking at some of the elements that have come out of some of the automatic vehicle stuff, some of the types of cyber attacks that people have been seeing. So covering some known attacks, uh, different types of attack vectors going back over these things. Um, so the no authentication, the no input validation, these sorts of things where um, where things are not necessarily dependent on the things that they, so they're not dependent on real things, they're dependent on synthetic elements that are around there. So as it says there, the warning lights only depend on the alarm flag, not the real uh, pressure that goes with these things. So it's not actually measuring those sorts of things, it's measuring other elements and that's very common and we find that in a lot of things. Um, I will skip through these relatively quickly. Uh, some more known attacks here. Um, this one here, man in middle attacks. This one you may be familiar with. This is the this is the uh, um, stealing keys and things uh, and used to, using this to track and unlock uh, General Motors cars or BMW cars or Mercedes and Chrysler cars. It's actually doing the man in the middle uh, attacks around those sorts of things. Um, sitting outside and when you press your button going to going around those sorts of things um, and I think in going through these what we're trying to do is demonstrate or what Carsten was trying to do was demonstrate that there are a lot of different types of cyber attacks that come in a lot of different ways um, this is odd one I actually like this one a lot um, because from a safety point of view people apparently are quite attracted by the idea you don't have to break into their house to steal their car um, they see that as a plus um, that you can stay outside and you, you don't torture the family to, to, to get the keys to the car. Um, and I understand the police um, received a, a request to not complain about these sorts of things because it, it was actually uh, seen as a positive by, by a number of the people who had their cars stolen. Um, so I guess that's, uh, that's an indication that, that often you, you don't necessarily get things occurring in the way that you think they would. Um, it says here, um, this was a question of actually impersonating Wi-Fi networks, uh, networks in order to, to trick things into actually connecting. It's based on the idea that people are using their phones to unlock their cars and things of that nature and user credentials of that sort. Um, I don't need to do this. That's the, that's the staff in the ignition. He said, skip to page 25. Um, have any of you seen this slide before? Everybody's seen this slide before. Um, this is the, uh, the, uh, the Jeep attack, which actually was, was presaged previous to that by the DARPA stuff that, that actually came out of the, the Hackens projects and things. They did it by actually attacking the CD player. Uh, this was actually using a slightly different thing. Um, Miller and Vasek were the people. They built on the previous work, as it said. It affected 1.4 million. It says there that it controlled the steering and the brakes, but actually controlled the accelerator as well. Our observation is if you have control of the steering, the brakes and the accelerator and you put that into a processor, that is an automatic car that you've just created there. It's just asking for somebody to take that to court. Um, so that's a known attack that goes with those sorts of things. Um, the LiDAR spoofing here, yeah, I won't read through these things, but again, looking at, at the fact that you um, you don't necessarily have ways of, of um, uh, you don't have ground truths and things around the, these sorts of devices when you're doing what you're doing. Uh, CAN bus attacks. It's saying there are a lot of known attacks, I think, is what we're basically going on on this one as I try and get through these things. Uh, oh, yes, American farmers hacking their own tractors. John Deere is a rich source of, um, of, um, is a rich source of, of uh, information on attacks. Uh, did anybody know that John Deere is worth more for the soil samplers than it is for the tractors they sell? Um, but actually one of the things that went with that is, so this, that's actually a really good indication that what you're actually seeing there is, is transformations in the industry whereby 
it actually turns out to be really important that you can sell the data, yeah, rather than actually some of the things that people think are the elements that you're selling. Um, but this was a question of people were uh, doing unauthorized repairs to the tractors, uh, which actually was uh, was um, was hacks that were being propagated by the farmers themselves in order to get things done. Uh, probably very similar to people actually chipping their cars uh, in order to get the same sort of thing. So these are well-known hacks that go with these things. Carsten wanted me to talk about the UK Site program, uh, which is a living laboratory. This was actually set up. It's a shame that our colleague from you know, Cab has gone. Uh, was set up and it's now Midlands Future Mobility. So I guess this is actually taking it full circle to, to Tim Edwards' speech at the beginning of the day. Uh, but essentially was looking at some of the some of the issues associated with running connected cars around in a, in a circle. These were the participants. Um, I will pause on that for a moment. It was quite a wide distribution. Obviously, Huawei was the flavor of the month at the time, uh, whether it is or not at the moment. But I don't believe they did very much on the 5G stuff on that one, even though that was what they were there for. Um, and this, I think, is a map of all the bits. It was actually looking at different ways, so actually looking at different types of connectivity. And we did, as part of that, a fairly conventional um, um, cyber security assessment, which involved looking at the state of the art, going through and analyzing things, um, from Warwick's point of view, doing 0 0.5, 0 0.6 there, the cyber security testing and things that went in relation to that. So um, I guess there is a question that goes with this. Do any of you believe that attackers feel that they need to go through these steps in order to do these things? Because I'm pretty sure they don't. Uh, so, um, but the threat analysis and the risk assessments and things of this nature, this was using, if you like, the IT state of the art about how you do those sorts of things. Um, and it was done by people I regard as intensely competent. They're really good people that were trying to do these things. Um, what it didn't do was actually come up with a way of avoiding cyber attacks. It successfully identified there were quite a lot of them. Um, and I don't think in any case it suggested that was an exhaustive set they, they managed to come up with. Petras, um, it's keen that I talk about Petras and looking at periphery of the internet stuff. Um, this is a big program that's actually looking at IoT type things and again is looking at ways in which and is regarding things that are in vehicles as part of a connected whole and actually again looking at some of the ways that go with that. I don't believe in Petras they've managed to do anything other than architectural approaches to trying to look at these things and I don't believe they've managed to push that into such a way that you could actually successfully manage to get people to follow those architectural approaches. Um, so some of the challenges, consent and control, responsibility, human out of the loop stuff, botnets. You can read these as well as I can. Most particularly things like the physical and the cyber. Um, that, that is actually a pretty difficult thing to look at. And part of what I believe is being observed here is you actually can't, you know, it, it's easy to do things inside an IT thing. So the previous talk looked at how I do things inside ASICs, for instance. This aspect of if I'm doing physical stuff, I've got people in the loop, I've got, yeah, I've got um, IT effects on these things. Actually doing a model that copes with all of those is beyond the complexity that we can manage to cope with and we don't have co-modeling systems for all of those at the moment. Challenges, PKI, um, some people calling it an opportunity, I, I call it a, a challenge as well. Supply chain, the fact that things are dynamic, the edge of the vehicle, so what's looking at on the Petrus things, and the identification and notification of failure is a really big deal on these things. I've yet to find anybody that's actually got enough budget to handle those sorts of things into the system. And if you haven't got enough budget, then you're not doing it. I think it was part of his observation. Over the air elements, legacy systems. Um, I should say one, one of the things that I know Carsten has been working on, which I think is really important, is um, resource exhaustion attacks. So things, for instance, on, on uh, looking at uh, in the in the Midlands mobility thing, looking at if I can't handle more than 70 vehicle to vehicle communications and I've got a thousand in range, how do I find out the one that matters? Yeah, because I'm being swamped with the ones that don't. Um, those kinds of questions about how you handle those sorts of things and the resource attention, resource exhaustion elements, I know are very important to him. Skills beyond the engineering procurement and the culture and information sharing between the OEMs. That was regarded as a problem. I don't personally believe that it necessarily is. Um, however, um, that's a big deal. And everybody likes to mention ransomware. 
because uh, apparently that's important. How much security testing is enough? Um, security costs, I know we've got a really good slide here. Uh, this is people gaming the system, so um, I like this one as well. So apparently the way it works is you can get an iPad for $51, all you have to do is up the offer for the, one, for the person trying to get their iPad back for, for a $50 reward. Um, and this is what you're starting to see in cyber security, essentially. I get somebody publishing this, you tell me what the problem is, I just have to up it by a dollar and we'll do, we'll do the right thing. Um, and this element about fail safe versus fail secure. Uh, this one here is a, is, a, is a picture of a Mercedes, which I'm pretty sure I can't buy at the moment, but will be able to in the moment. This is talking about the differences on you know, the ability to think like attackers. Um, if you were able to read the text, which I guess you are, it's talking about gestures and things. And the suggestion here was in the event that somebody actually puts their hand up to tell it to stop, it should stop. That's really good, unless you happen to be some really high worth people in the car, in which case that sounds like a really good way to mug high worth people in cars, put your hand up and get it to stop. Which is interesting because what you're starting to look at there is correct operation used in an inappropriate way. Now, so you're not looking at a failure, you're actually looking at, which is exactly the point that you made about the, the spectres and meltdowns. It wasn't that somebody didn't design it to do, they designed it to do that so that it would be 20% more efficient than it would have been if you hadn't done that. And you just need to think like attackers, um, and I would observe, Attackers don't think on the basis of actually separating things up and dividing them in the way that we keep dividing them. They don't feel any obligation to do this. Um, and considering whether they're rational, actually, I think they're mostly rational. Um, I guess the bit that goes in that's with this and that's not there is, and how many of these things are actually just accidents? Yeah, so it was designed to do something elsewhere. So I'm quite prepared to answer questions on Carson's talk and I apologize for that being quite quick and but I've more or less got us, I've got us back on track. <laughs> I have to speak with a Midlands accent I know and so I apologize for that. <laughs> So, so it wasn't that it was looking at IT, so, so the methodology that it used is the type of methodology that you would have recognized from doing IT analysis and things of this nature. No. So, so it, was a, it was a technology study rather than a motivation. They didn't look at whether there was a, there was a purpose behind that. I gave a talk last year that said exactly that. <laughs> yeah. And so security is your problem as it is your as it is your solution. Um, <coughs> if I turn a point-to-point -point signal into 256 bits of, of different data on it, that's that's massively dif difficult. If I encrypt my CAN bus, and that was part of what the, what was talked about there, then the then the inability to actually retrieve my driving signals may be a problem. So it becomes a very very problematic thing. And when, when you say if do we ever get there, and that's kind of not an if. <laughs> uh, that, that is definitely a consideration. So it is absolutely the case that a cyber attack manifests as a safety problem. Yes. Okay. So 
but it's not a problem because we've only got 70 cabs on the road at the moment. I There isn't enough spectrum, there isn't enough solution, and all the cars can watch. Yes? Anyway, so I guess okay, but and it's seven. They managed, are you saying they managed to get seven or they found seven with them in it? So when they were all sitting stationary, yes. they managed to move 70, 70 vehicle to vehicle communications before they ran out of cycles. But it'd be fine, you'll get a faster processor. No, yeah. You don't get faster spectrum. Really? No. Oh, you see, I had no idea that would be a problem. <laughs> Come on, I managed to catch up on where we were supposed to be, and you. <laughs> how, how fair is that? <laughs>